Hi, I'm Kathy Faustus. In August, I was um, having a hard time because I was thinking about 40 years after I started working on PTSD, I had run out of ways to say what I've been saying for 40 years. And it's a very simple message. If you have PTSD, it means you survived whatever caused it. It doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean, you know, you're stuck with the changes the PTSD causes you. You can change again. There is hope. There is healing. And there's no reason to feel ashamed of anything if you survive something. Anyone who did not survive a traumatic event is not going to understand what PTSD does to you. They're not going to understand flashbacks. They're not going to understand mood swings, paranoia. Uh, I mean, just everything that comes with PTSD, they're not going to understand it. The only way to get them to understand is remind them of something terrible that happened in their lives. Get them to think about it. And then let them know it's like that event never ended. It kept coming back again. And when it wasn't happening, there was the threat of it happening again or the fear of it happening again. Now, I was considered a quote unquote expert on PTSD. I had survived events since the age of five. I did not connect what I had gone through all of my life to having PTSD. Supposedly I knew all about it, right? Well, I didn't. It wasn't until I was explaining to my adult daughter what trauma does to people. And I told her what happened when my ex-husband, who had come home one day when we were still married, started beating me and decided he was going to try to kill me. He ended up stalking me. That caused the biggest damage to me there was. All the stress, trauma, Nightmares, mood swings, panic attacks, uh, paranoia, you name it, was all connected to him. Not the other events that I had survived since, like I said, the age of five, and I've survived over 10 events. It was the threat of him causing me to be irrational to the point where we had been divorced, I was remarried, I had a, you know, a family, and I moved from Massachusetts down to Florida. The sound of a muscle car, which is what he always drove, caused all that to come back to me, even though we had moved so many miles away. And it didn't stop until a cousin of mine sent me the obituary notice letting me know that he had died. And then all of a sudden, I liked the sound of muscle cars again. The rev of the engine. All the bad memories were gone. So, like I said, in August, I was, you know, what new thing can I say? to everybody dealing with PTSD instead of just focusing on veterans, which was what I had done since 1982. And I prayed on it and prayed on it and prayed on it. And I started writing the Lost Son series. Now, if you know the Bible at all, you probably are aware of the prodigal son. And he left his father wanted to take his share of his money and go off and enjoy himself. Well, that didn't work out so good. 
he decided to go back to his father. And he said, I'm not worthy. But the father rejoiced when he came back. And he said, my son was dead, but is alive again. So the first book is The Lost Son. The second book is Alive Again. And the third book is Stranger Angels. Now they're all based on real life events from, from people I've talked to over the years. And the main character was not a veteran. He was a reporter. He covered the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan so that he could be with his best friend. Now Chris, Chris always wanted to be a priest in the Greek Orthodox Church. He loved God and he adored the priest that he had. But as years went on and things changed, he decided to be a reporter so that he could cover the major events. And he did. But there was a bomb blast and an explosion totally changed his life. When he survived, he went back to L.A. And his wife was phony as hell didn't like the fact that he was going to be home all the time instead of traveling around the world. And she hated him. She came home from work one night after he had been fired from the newspaper and tried to kill him. And then she stalked him. Made his life a miserable hell. Well, because he felt like such a failure and he couldn't get any jobs in L.A., he moved back to Salem, Massachusetts. And seven years from the day that that bomb changed his life, he decided he didn't want to suffer anymore and he wasn't going to. God agreed he shouldn't suffer anymore, but God had other plans. That very night, he was sitting in the bar of the Old Salem Hotel near where he lived, and Miracles walked in the door. Miracles do happen, and they happen because someone is led to do something for someone else. Now, sometimes... It's what we pray for, and miracles happen. If my life is any indication of that, I can assure you, miracles happen. Aside from the fact I'm still living after all these years and all I've been through, I'm basically a happy person. And that's because I healed spiritually all along so yes these books are christian based but they're not written for perfect people who go to church they're not written for people who don't really live their lives they're written for churchless people who like chris when he left the church that he loved, he never found another one that matched the church that he grew up in. Never found another priest who was like the one he had growing up. Now, I attended the same Greek Orthodox church for 45 years. And when I moved, I didn't feel like I belonged anyplace else. So I became churchless. I didn't become godless. So yes, there is a lot of Bible passages in these books. And there are a lot of really normal life stuff going on. 
where people swear and they drink and they try to just be the best people that they can be. And miracles happened. These books are written to give you hope so that you realize how much power you do have in your life. And that yes, God still loves. God is still there to talk to. And he's still there to answer prayers. So, if you want to find some hope, these books, that's one of the biggest purposes that they were written. There are a lot of veterans in the books. Some of the main characters are veterans. But there's also an Orlando female motorcycle cop who responded to Pulse. There are other people in these books, including a mystery woman who heard God and was led to help people just like Chris. So I hope I hope you find them and uh, they're on Amazon. If you Google Kathy Costas, K A T H I E C O S T O S, and you'll find my page, and you'll find the books. The first book I wrote was back in two thousand and two, and it was republished in two thousand and twelve, and that was for the love of Jack, and that's about eighteen years of living with my veteran with PTSD. And he's the reason why I focused on veterans so much with PTSD. But he's also the reason why I was so floored when it was finally pointed out to me um, that I had had it. I had seen two therapists and neither one of them spotted it in me. After my daughter brought it up, I contacted a couple of other therapists I know, and they said, yeah, sounds like it's a really rare form of it. Only because I'm a little bit weird, considering how long I've been facing death. So, I hope that you find the hope and the healing and the empowerment that I found. Because life is a whole lot better when you realize how much power you do have in controlling your own future. Life is so much better when you walk out of the darkness and you're walking in the light of love again. 